Hey guys, Richard Holder here and welcome to the channel. Small block Chevy fans, how do we add 140 horsepower without boost, without nitrous, and without changing the heads? In this video, I'm going to show you how we took a bare bones, low compression, hydraulic flat tappet 350 Chevy equipped with Vortex cylinder heads and went from 278 horsepower all the way up to 418 horsepower, all while retaining the Vortex heads. The question for today is how did we take a small block Chevy from the rec yard and go from this kind of power curve to this kind of power curve? So we're going to take a look at this it's step by step and show you actually what happened. And this was our, basically, I want to say that this was a stock Vortec 350 L31, except it wasn't. <laughs> the only thing that it had on it were the Vortec L3 or L31 rather, uh, it had the Vortec small block heads on it. And this started out actually as a the 190 horsepower crate motor from GM that makes obviously a lot more than that, but it's a very low compression. It came with a hydraulic flat tap at camshaft, as I said, the dish pistons, and these turned out to be 10 or 15 thousandths down in the hole in addition to being a dish piston. Uh, we removed the heads that came with the crate motor and put Vortec heads. We did a Vortec head upgrade. So, and I'm going to show you that what would happen if you would just start with a Vortec motor to begin with. You'd start out at a much higher power level in this, especially if you are you had the combination of the Vortec head. You'd have more static compression. You'd have a hydraulic roller cam, and basically everything would be better. So, you'd be starting out at a better point than we did. But this is what we had, and so this is what our project started with. So we had our small block, low compression. It probably was, I'm thinking it might have been in the eights. Uh, we didn't actually CC everything and measure it, but um, given the dish piston and the chamber on the Vortec head, it was not very high. The other thing we had, and one of the reasons that this thing didn't make very much power, is it because it had a hydraulic flat tap at cam that was designed for a factory truck application. This was like a service replacement kind of motor, think, think Target Master Small Block Chevy. But run with long tube headers, and we put a dual plane intake manifold on it, a 650 Holley, and our long tube headers with an MST distributor with the Vortec heads and, and otherwise that stock flat tap at camshaft. Our combination produced 278 horsepower, and torque wasn't too bad at 353 foot-pounds of torque. But now we're going to take a look at what happened and upgrade this combination and show you how much more power we made step by step. Now that we've introduced our small block Chevy buildup, our hydraulic flat tappet base motor with Vortec heads on it, I want to show you really quickly where you would be starting with if you just written to the wrecking yard and got an L31 and put a dual plane intake. Obviously, the dual plane intake is designed specifically for the Vortec head bolt pattern. So here's what would happen if you just went and got a Vortec head and that's exact or Vortec headed small block that you were starting with. And you can see it just makes more power everywhere. It has higher compression and has a hydraulic roller cam. It's really a better starting point. So if you're going to go to the wrecking yard and grab something, don't start with a hydraulic flat tap cam and don't start with one that we started with which is that crate motor I mean you can but it's a much better deal just get an L31 and then you'd be money ahead and power ahead but that's not where we did so we started off with our our hybrid combination of a hydraulic flat tap at short block and Vortec heads but here's what happened when we installed a camshaft in our combination and this was a comp extreme energy 268 cam I'll go ahead and put the specs up here we retained our long tube headers our distributor and our dual plane Speedmaster Eliminator intake manifold with the Holly 650 carburetor. All we did basically was change the camshaft in this case. We obviously had to change, change the springs in the cylinder heads to cooperate with this new camshaft. The 268, as you can see, has fairly mild specs in it, but it is a performance cam and it pushed our peak power out by almost a thousand RPM from 4600 out to about 54 or 5500, so call that 900 RPM. It pushed peak power from 278 up to 343 and 381 foot-pounds. And again, if you were starting with your uh, Vortec combination, you would have started out a lot higher and you would have ended up a lot higher because the camshaft would help you out even more. But now let's take a look and see what happened and find out how we got from here, our middle point, How did we get from there to there? We're going to cover that next. 
before we get to our eventual peak power output, which is going to be this right here, we need to go up in steps. So, we're, you know, <laughs> that's where we got to with our camshaft previously. We got to right here, but now how do we get from 343 horsepower up to 418 horsepower? So we ended up producing 418 horsepower and 421 foot-pounds of torque. Again, remember, not a hydraulic roller motor, hydraulic flat tappet motor, but we made a number of changes. First of all, we changed the short block. We didn't change the, the block or the crank or the rods, but we did update them. Um, and what we did was the piston was about 15 thousandths down in the hole in this combination. It was a dish piston and it had valve relief, but what we did was mill the block to bring the piston up to zero deck, which helped us with our static compression. The other thing we did was with our Vortec head, we milled the Vortec head. We milled the head 30 thousandths. And we also incorporated between the two a steel shim head gasket, which, which had a dramatic effect. All of these things combined to have a dramatic effect on static compression ratio, which is may, improves power basically everywhere. While we had this thing apart, we also incorporated a windage tray because we know that we're having oiling issues. This is even more important out on the track, on the short track that this combination was running on. Less important on the dyno, but we know that it shows power gains even on the dyno. So we had a stop, a, a, a gate basically to stop the thing from um, the oil from sloshing. We had a baffle in it and also a windage tray. So all those things, good idea on a typical small block Chevy. The, the cylinder heads, the Vortec heads, we could not actually go in and port them to improve the power, which you can. You could change the short turn radius, go in and do the bowl, do all that stuff, but none of that could be done on this particular application. But what we could do is we did mill them, and also they were treated to a, a very important multi-angle valve job on the 194-150 valves that we included in that combination. So milled and a good valve job on the Vortec heads. They were also treated to the right valve spring combination to ensure that we could run the camshaft that we eventually run. Now, here is here's the trick information on the camshaft. They wouldn't tell us what the specs were on the camshaft. It was supplied by a short track power cam guru, and he wouldn't be very specific. He said it was less than 500 lift, which is typical of this kind of camshaft. That it had that it had duration specs in the 240 degree range. I think that that's probably not accurate given our available piston and valve clearance, um, and that it had a very tight LSA. I'm assuming is at 105 to 106, given the idle quality, which was n not great. But for this combination, we weren't really concerned because it was not a daily driver deal. So, uh, it, you know, an aggressive ramp rate, a tight LSA. Short lift, you know, it had duration in it, obviously more than our two, our Extreme Energy 260 hydraulic flat tappet. Again, it was a hydraulic flat tappet cam. There was nothing tricky done with the lifters. They were not short travel lifters. It was just a standard travel comp uh, hydraulic flat tappet. Um, the other thing we did add to this combination is we, in which the rules wouldn't allow, we were just running this on the dyno, but to make this kind of power, we also incorporated a roller rocker, which was a 152 comp uh, roller, aluminum roller rocker, which worked very well. No change to the intake. We did uh, rejet the carburetor to get it to produce the air fuel that we wanted. And this combination wanted a little bit different timing curve, but we adjusted the timing to make maximum power. So all this combination was put together and it ended up producing Wah! 418 horsepower and 421 foot pounds of torque. You could reproduce this with an off-the-shelf camshaft um, if you were real mindful and did all the other modifications that we did, especially if you put a little bit of time into porting the, the cylinder heads because you don't need to do all of the trick things that we did to this short track kind of combination. You have more leeway, obviously, if you're putting this in a combination and you're just running it on the street. So you don't have to worry about rule and classification stuff. The other thing that you would do is if you're starting with an L31, you wouldn't use a flat tappy camshaft. You just use a hydraulic roller because it's probably going to work better. The one cool trick I want to show you before we get going is take a look at what, uh, what we did by changing the header design and this was the chassis header that they were using in that chassis it had a smaller primary than the headers that we use it actually had a shorter collector length it actually had shorter primary length as well and it was just designed to fit in the in the chassis that the guy was running this thing but i thought it was interesting that we picked up a ton of power down low and it basically had no effect on power above 4700 rpm but lots of power down low so it shows you that the right header can make a big difference in power but sometimes just down low.
Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did we learn from this little adventure on our Vortec headed small block Chevy? First of all, when you're starting off with a small block Chevy, it's fairly easy to make power, even when you're limited as we were to the stock Vortec head. Now I say a stock Vortec head. I know we did make a few modifications to it. We milled it and we did a good valve job. But if you're going to have a set of heads on your motor, they should have at least a good valve job. Now I really wish I knew exactly what the cam timing was on this motor, but it's not really that important. We know that with a decent camshaft, you can make over 400 horsepower on a Vortec headed small block Chevy, especially when you pay attention to detail like we did. We increased the static compression. We had the good camshaft in it. We put things like a windage tray. All of that stuff helps when it's time to make power. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.